it's about 6 a.m. I'm gonna load up the bees and head for southern Utah. Last in, first out, first in, last out kind of a deal. These are going to Monument Valley, so this will be the last stop on my trip. So we'll put them in first. Well, I'm at it again, I'm going to be out again. We're down in southern Utah. The reason I'm down here is because I need to replace some of the missing elements of the bees genetics so I uh, listened to a lecture given a while back by Sue Kobe she talks about 25% of the honeybees alleles that are missing so they're missing because the bee breeders have selected for certain traits and against other traits those traits are crucial to the bees survival so my attempt to uh, help bees to survive on their own is to capture feral queens, wild honeybees, and include those in our breeding stock. Come on along, it's a lot of fun. It's hot, middle of July, middle of the day, no cloud cover, the bees are getting kind of buzzy, so I'm anxious to get them out of the truck, so we'll keep driving, keep the air going through the vehicle. All right, putting out a couple more nukes. Open the gate, let them out. Okay, that's the first couple of nukes that uh, I've brought back. These are Monument Valley Queens. We'll see how they do, come back in a couple weeks. The bees got too hot, they pushed their box over so they could get out and cool down. Well, we got a leaker. I'm gonna get them out of the truck here as quick as I can. I don't think we've lost too many bees. Going down the road at 60 miles an hour, they'll hang on tight. These bees will drift into the colony I put out here, so I'm not too worried about leakers. If you've ever read Manley's Honey Farming, you might recall that he went to great lengths to secure the bees inside the box when he was transporting them. So we want to avoid leakers if we can. It's always a challenge to, to keep the bees inside the box. Incidentally, that last uh, box that tipped over, I'm reminded of a uh, story in pioneer history at Hole in the Rock in, near pa Lake Powell, where a wagon was coming down the steep terrain and tipped over and they were ha carrying some honeybees with them. So it's quite possible that the uh, honeybees that are feral to, in this area are from a result of things like that happening when they brought bees in. This was back in the mid-1800s. Well, you think as long as I've been doing this, I'd get the hang of getting the bees to their destination without them leaking out all over the place. So the duct tape I had over the top entrance here came loose. So I'm going to get this one out of the truck as quick as I can. I want to change places with this hive. I'll take the label off of this one and swap it. Okay, here we go, right over here.
All right, a year ago or so, I put out a swarm trap. I'm gonna check on it, see if we caught anything. I didn't put any lure in it this spring, so who knows? Uh, it won't be as attractive as otherwise, but I don't see any bee activity. No luck. Anyway, we'll leave it there and uh, put some lure in it next time. Keep trying. Well, I got another leaker. Uh, I don't know uh, where they're coming out under the lid there, I guess, in the corner. So, we're not having the best luck keeping the bees contained on this trip, but what else do you do? Keep going. It'll work out okay. Uh, the bee lessons uh, to learn from this is if they leak out, where are they going to go? Eventually, they're going to want to go back in the hive, and so it's not the end of the world if they leak out. We might uh, lose some bees to drift a little bit, but it's okay as long as you've got the uh, temperament to deal with some bees buzzing around you while you're driving and transporting them. That's the leaker right there, I can see. They're coming out right out of there. <laughs> 